Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to this morning's panel discussion. I apologize for the late start, uh, but uh, the panel discussion is going to be on stencil printing versus jet printing. So recent improvements in jet printing equipment have closed the gap between stencil printing and jetting deposition. This panel will discuss the benefits and restrictions of both systems and uh, future technology requirements. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, two very distinguished gentlemen here from the industry. That's uh, Torsten Wegelan from ASUS. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, of course, we have Nico Conan here from Micronic. Good morning, everybody. OK. Good morning. Uh, so welcome, gentlemen, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my first question is uh, to you, perhaps, uh, Torsten. What are the strengths of stencil printing versus jetting deposition? and what are its limitations? That's a very good question, and I think we could uh, talk hours about this, because <laughs> where light is, there's shadow. And the stencil printing, everyone knows in the industry, is a very common, very common and very stable process, but we do have limitations. On the other side, if you see jet printing, we can overcome limitations, what we have in the stencil printing, uh, with an additional process. So at the moment, what we see from our point of view is a, uh, what do you say, it, it's, it's a way together. Mm -hmm. So we, we can work with step stencils on the printing side, but step stencils also cost money. But we need that to combine the different technologies. Mm -hmm. So if, if we would combine this with jet printing, you know, we have a way to use a normal stencil. Right. So looking just to the process of printing, at the moment, we would say, purely say we do not need a jet printing. We could do all with stencil printing. But <laughs> Nico is going to re respectfully argue with that, I would think. Um, OK, let me ask the obvious uh, opposite question, uh, Nico. What are the strengths of jet printing versus, versus stencil printing? Yeah, I think um, um, the, the, the top strength, of course, uh, that uh, we have a software-driven system. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have a software-driven system, that gives you a lot of uh, benefits uh, that you can have, like uh, it, well, in the light of uh, all the new technologies, the Industry 4.0 and so on. I mean, you can have an automatic uh, changeovers mm -hmm. versus a stencil. You have a man manual removal of the stencil and uh, putting on a new, new stencil. So that is a very important element that you can change from one job to another automatically. Mm -hmm. That is a big, big thing. The other big thing I would say is that you have the flexibility. Right. Um, with a stencil, you have to choose a certain thickness or you have to use with the step stencils. Uh, I would say with jet printing there is no kind of limitation on how you would put down the volumes. You can right. put down very small volumes uh, next to very big volumes, mm -hmm. which might be sometimes a challenge on step stencils where you have to respect the distances between um, or the step. You cannot just go for like a one millimeter, go down to zero uh, without a certain distance. So there are limitations that I think uh, the jet printer can overcome very easily. On the other hand, of course, um, we have to, or we all know that um, stencil printing is very fast. Yes. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter whether you have a small board or a big board, cycle time is more or less the same. Yeah. For us, it does make a difference whether we have to put down 1,000 dots or 1 million dots on a board. Right. Uh, so I think, for me, that's, that's where really, I think, the, the differences are. I, I agree. I mean, you've, you've, you've laid it out fairly well. Um, the, um, but the automation, first of all, the automation of the stencil process, uh, I don't know if that's ever going to be possible to automatically load stencils into a printer. Uh, I imagine it's, it's possibly feasible at some point. I don't know. Um, but uh, certainly it has speed. Um, uh, and until recently, really, your, your jetting uh, deposition system uh, was more for small run and prototyping. But now that you've doubled the capacity, it's coming it's becoming more of a contender in, in the uh, normal production process. But is there a cutoff be between um, uh, how many stencils or, or how many boards you're running uh, or 
a, a type of board or a size of board where you would not use a, a, a jet printer, but you would prefer to use a stencil printer? Uh, I think it's a good question. I think uh, what we have seen over time is that um, in the early days, we were um, basically only replacing screen printing at uh, facilities that were doing short batches, low volumes. I mean, that has been our entry level. Uh, a lot of uh, people that wanted to have uh, high quality, like uh, aerospace, uh, uh, military guys that um, uh, didn't mind to invest in a, in a fairly large investment at that time, uh, but they wanted to have the capability to uh, make sure that they had the best quality. Um, but like you said, over time, and, and, and actually the jet printing has been on the market for more than 10 years, has been evolved and we have had, uh, of course, the questions, okay, how can we cope with speed? Um, originally, I think when we go back to the first generation, we were talking about like uh, 25,000 components per hour speed. If we see now on the latest generation, uh, the My 700, um, we have made it uh, in such a way that we can make it modular and that we can put down multiple jet printers next to each other and the software will look at it as one system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a line here at the exhibition that is rated at uh, uh, 100,000 components per hour, right. which is, I think, um, in most of the cases in Europe and, and US, uh, more than suitable uh, to, to cope with uh, the speed of the lines. Right, right. I mean, Torsten, I mean, Definitely, I think when you come to high volume applications, it, uh, it makes a lot of sense to use uh, stencil printing uh, and uh, it has economic benefits that there as well. Would you agree? That's definitely right. But uh, let me just come back to one thing uh, about the automation. We do have automatic stencil changing systems. You so, do? Yes, yeah. we do have that on the booth as well. Okay. Not for the SMT at the moment, but for our applications. But this would work. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, coming back to your question. It depends a little bit on the stencil maker. If you have a stencil maker next to you, you can also use it for small ones because he can deliver probably within a couple of hours and a couple of days, uh, six or seven hours, and you could run. Uh, stencil printing has a pure cost benefit at the yeah. moment. We can go very, very small, and uh, I, I think I lost your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just talking about the, the, the economics, really, of, 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 of the stencil printing. Uh, and coming to the economics, mm -hmm. we can use just the paste we need for the product you run. So if you have an 0603, you're fine with a Type 3 paste. If you really go to a fine pitch, then you have to go for a Type 5 paste, for instance. And this is a tremendous impact to the cost. Yeah. If you have an easy stencil, it comes and goes for a couple of hundred dollars. And you can really go, do small runs as well. Mm -hmm. Now the question is how fast you can change over. And change over is about one or two minutes. Mm -hmm. So this is also not a big deal. So in the end of the economics, what I learned from my customers, for them today there's no reason to change over just from the stencil printing to the jet printing. Right. Even they like it. Right, yeah. It's certainly the, the, the system that most people are using. Um, but Nico, could I ask you, I mean, the, the cost of jet printers is, has, is considerably higher uh, than, a, than a stencil printer. Is that likely to come down over time? Well, I think the cost has come down already mm -hmm. quite, quite significantly over time. So um, uh, originally, I think, or, or when we launched the, the product, uh, we were talking about a 300 um, a thousand euro machine. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. So that that, that was, and, and at, at, that, at that time, I think you could also buy a stencil printer for fifty thousand. So you were you were talking about six x. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So that was really a significant uh, difference. So over time, of course, this uh, price has come down uh, quite significantly. And um, uh, you, but but um, uh, my colleague here did really uh, point out that there is a difference, of course, in, in using different types of paste. Huh? So uh, uh, we are typically using a Type 5 paste, which is a little bit more expensive than, right. uh, than a type, uh, type 4 paste. Mm -hmm. However, we have done a lot of uh, cost of ownership calculations, and uh, what we see is that because we utilize almost all the paste uh, versus a lot of um, uh, scrap if you do a lot of changeovers, mm -hmm. uh, and then the cost of ownership is, is more or less on par. But that is typically if you have a, like a, a high mixed kind of environment. Right. 
I, I would agree that if you're running like one product all week long, same paste, that probably uh, the paste cost eh, is still uh, cheaper than on any, any stands printer. In a mixed environment, I would disagree because of, because of the waste that you have uh, if you have to change the, the, the stencils all the time. Yeah, well, of yeah. course, you don't have the cost of a stencil with a jet printer, and, and, and for a high mix environment, it does make some sense, uh, and it's good for prototyping. Um, the highest number of defects are known to come from the printer. You know, Typically, everybody talks about 60, 70% of the defects emanate from the printer. So which of these two printing processes do you think um, produces the least number of defects? I'll let you take that first, Torst. <laughs> That's an unfair question. <laughs> That's an unfair question because within the printing process, uh, everyone looks to the printer. Mm -hmm. And we have so many influences, paste, product, stencil, the design, and all those things. And if you would compare this with the jet printing, I think we only have a couple of, uh, what do you say, common impacts together, paste and product. And yes, if you would take this in consideration, mm -hmm. the jet printing process should be, just by those comparison, better than the stencil printing. Right, okay. You know, there are less influences, from my point of view, to the jet printing. Yeah, of course, obviously the, 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 the stencil can clog and, and you, can, you can have different things go wrong with, 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 with that if it's not maintained properly. Yeah, the nozzle of a jet can also clog. Of that, course. So, mm -hmm. But there are a couple of influences you don't have. The failure of a stencil. Mm -hmm. If a stencil manufacturer makes a failure, good, you could have a failure in your CAD data. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. well, uh, you know, they can, there's they a can potential. also make mistakes in, in programming as well. So, <laughs> who yeah. knows? Uh, Nico, um, I think the uh, the <clears throat> the big difference is is that um, uh, since we are a software-driven uh, product, that we are much more flexible in in, in uh, adapting. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if your stencil is made wrongly or whatever, I mean, you have to wait and you have to go for a new stencil. Since mm -hmm. we are a software-driven um, uh, product, basically anything that you see, okay, what is not 100% correctly, you could uh, basically change on the fly. So right. you just go into the program and make some small uh, adaptation. If there's stretch uh, on the board or whatever, um, we compensate that by uh, fiducial searching, uh, like on a pick and play side. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of um, uh, tools that we have in our uh, in our pocket that we can utilize uh, to ensure that the quality is is is, is the best. Right. That's why you typically saw that the early adopters were the uh, aerospace guys, the military guys, where they say, "Hey, price is one thing." But quality for me is number one. Eh? Right. And being able to put down the right amount of volume and in the right shape, uh, I think that was the driver. Okay. So, and I think that still is uh, an important element. Right. Okay. Uh, are jet printers you know, limited to certain uh, manufacturers of, 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 uh, or certain types of pastes? Uh, you know, what are the limitations on, on uh, paste for, for jet printers? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's been a... I would say a big limitation over time. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, screen printer more or less works with any, any type of paste huh, because yeah. this is the, the most uh, established um, uh, process. Uh, we started with, uh, with two paste vendors uh, back in the time. Uh, we have been working with them very in intensively to get it to work because yeah. it's, it's a challenging process. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but over time, of course, we have uh, worked with uh, uh, almost any, any paste supplier. And today uh, we have... Um, come to a point where we're not so uh, limited anymore in the, in, in the, the supply of uh, different paste vendors. Mm -hmm. So I think almost all the paste suppliers today are working on a jettable version of paste. Right. So um, yes, it is still a different type of paste uh, mm -hmm. because you have to make a certain modification on the paste itself to make it jettable. But most... most is it a certain size? Is it you know, a type... Uh, type 8 or is it? Is well, in, in our general uh, process, we typically use a type 5. Type eh? 5, okay. But uh, in order to get down to the 200 micron or even smaller uh, type of dots, then you have to go to type 6 and maybe in the future we might have to go even further. Right, right, okay. Uh, Torsten, if I can sort of um, finish with you, um, how big an issue is, is stencil storage? Because it, you know, the, I went to a lot of factories and it takes up a lot of space. <laughs> I think it's, it's definitely an issue. Mm -hmm. Our customers need to take care because every stencil occupies a certain space. Mm -hmm. 
Now, there are smart solutions on the market for quick uh, exchange systems from various vendors, I don't will call them now, where you can reduce the requirement for those stencil right. and storage areas. But I personally know customers, they have 4,000 active products and you need to store those 4,000 stencils close in your uh, close to your manufacturing area. And yeah. these usually are big areas. You can combine them with stencil washing and everything. Uh, at the moment, there's not really a way or a solution to reduce this amount. Mm -hmm. So we have to live with it. So that's why I said where light is a shadow. So we have a stable process and it's easy for the guys to use it and for the changeovers. But it also has some, yeah. Yeah, I think I think in summary, you know, obviously there, there there is there is room for both processes. It really depends what you're making and the volume of what you're making and the number of changeovers you're doing. Before we finish, I just want to maybe open up the floor a little bit. If anybody's got any questions for our panelists uh, on stencil printing or jet printing, does anybody have any questions? If you do, just raise your hand and we'll bring you a microphone. No. Is there any one of you using jet printing? Okay. So we've got a few, a few users that are using jet printing. And the rest of you are all using stencil, I guess. Okay. Interesting. Well, I want to thank our panelists today. Uh, Torsten Wegelin from uh, ASUS. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Nico Konen from Micronic. Uh, and thank you for joining us. Thank you.